Welcome back. Time for multifunction two. Finish the router. Very happy with the router table. It is the main reason I designed this. The second thing I wanted is an inverted jigsaw, which I'm going to use to replicate some of the functions of a bandsaw, another beautiful tool that I don't have the time, money, or space for. Here's the final product. We're going to go back in time in a second, but I thought I'd show it to you to begin with. On one of those bases. Now, obviously, if this is the first of my videos you've seen, you need to know how to make this table in order to make the bases. So click the card up the top here, and it'll take you to the three-part saga on how I made this multifunction table with my lovely hole in here. And in part three, it shows you how to make these little plywood bases. This video is going to be concentrated on this, mounting a jigsaw to a base so that I can have it slot in quite nicely. You may notice that this is the first corded tool that I've actually used. Nearly all of my tools are the 18 volt brushless Makita range and I love them to pieces, but when it came to jigsaw shopping, it was about $250 or was it $350 for the brushless cordless jigsaw. Also, with a free moving blade, I did want a bit more safety to have easy access to a cutoff switch via a power with the jigsaw. And to be honest, the Ryobi one was 70 bucks. It's the baby of the range. It doesn't have a lot of grunt, but I think it's gonna get me at least, you know, hopefully for a couple of years through the functions I want. If I find it's underpowered, I can always upgrade at a later date. But you know, I'm trying to be flexible as much as a Makita fanboy that I am. And uh, there's nothing wrong with the Ryobi and you don't need expensive tools to accomplish simple tasks. So sit back and uh, this will be a fairly short video, I hope, on how to get this project done. This one luckily fits in much easier than the router. I don't have to be as careful, but I do want it squared. So that's roughly in the center. Squared it up like that. And I just want to quickly mention this. You might have seen it sitting on the shelf. I bought this 10 years ago, 11 actually, when I was living up in Musselbrook. I got it from a junk shop, just one of those discount uh, Ronnie's type places and it has been brilliant since I started getting into the handyman stuff and the woodworking. It's got heaps of things in there. They pull out there, it's all the wall plugs, use those for all my masonry drilling, random size nails, nuts, bolts, screws, those little machine screws that I'm going to use again to mount this. They all came in there, it was like 10 bucks. Just going to Bunnings to buy a few wing nuts, washers, and bolts for a specific size, which I didn't even end up using for this table. You know, that was four or five dollars. So, junk shop, man, if you're just starting out, pick up the cheap things. This here is going to serve me still for ages, and it's you know, just as good as buying, you know, off the shelf stuff at Bunnings or another hardware store. So, great little investment that was. The only thing that scares me slightly about this is the first few holes which are gonna to have to drill through the metal of the jigsaw in order to mount it here. I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. I've already figured out I can smooth metal pretty easily for when I take it off again. Flip it upside down, have another bench tool. I've clamped the jigsaw down as best that I can. Now I'm just gonna use a hammer and a nail in order to mark off where I wanna drill my holes. I'm gonna do a small pilot hole and then a slightly bigger one for the screw. I'm always really nervous drilling through metal, so I'm just taking it very, very slowly. Also, I don't want to punch at the table below. Perfect.
So obviously, these little nuts are a bit of a problem. Next trip to the hardware shop, going to get me some small wings. That'll make taking this off and on much easier. That'll do for now. Well, there's the base all screwed on. Much easier. This is only taking me about 10 minutes compared to the router, which took well, a lot more fussing about. So I didn't have to cut the nuts down, which is great. Why do I keep saying nuts instead of bolts? Love my nuts. Mmm, cashiers. Didn't have to cut the bolts down, so mounting this was much easier. Four screws, countersunk. Just mentioned we're going to replace these with wing nuts. I haven't ended up dead square. My whole drilling skills are shite house. So, yeah, well, I'm going to have to live with that. If I ever need to make perfectly square cuts, I'm going to have to be very careful because this blade will not be square. Speaking of the blade, I haven't installed it yet, but when I do, last thing I need is a little slot here to give me some zero clearance cutting. Not too happy with these blades, uh, and my skill level of course too. The scrolling blade I think is going to help a lot. I tried to turn on this one and it just burnt, and the teeth per inch are really low. It's only a 10, so if I go up a little bit, I should get some smoother cuts. I don't really worry about speed as long as they look nice. A lot of these small projects I'm going to be working on, this table is going to be ideal, and it gives me as we said, the second function to my multi-purpose workbench. One final step to finish off this little project. Just like on my router, I've decided to cut away about half of the 12mm plywood here. I've done a few good tests with this and I've made one small project and it just feels like the blade is not very stable and I think that's because it's having to travel through 12mm of ply before it actually starts cutting. So the closer I can cut to this metal base, I think the better cut I'm going to be able to get. And I think the tighter curves I'm going to be able to get too, because I haven't been able to quite curve it very well. Fortunately, it should be a fairly simple process. Draw it around the outside, quickly remove this. Get my router, taking it down to, there we go, half the width of the board. And we'll just cut away all of that and reinstall should improve the cutting precision and finish off this inverted jigsaw. Happy with that. That's going to have given me another six or seven mils of more travel in the blade and hopefully make it more stable. Let's give it a test run. I'm pretty happy with that. It's hard for you to tell, I suppose, because well, you've never used a saw before, but I could feel then two things. Firstly, it wasn't as vibrating. You'll notice there is a bit of vibration there. The board sort of does this just a little bit, but uh, it's much better than it was. And also, I was still taking that pretty slowly, but 
that's a, a reasonably tight curve. I probably can go more. I just got to sort of build my skill and confidence with the tool. But anyway, that's pretty successful. I'm really happy with the improvements uh, made on the original design. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Second function of the multifunction table done. Now it's time to move on to number three, my angle grinder disc sander.